small and medium scale agro processing is what will provide incentive to peasants across Uganda to commercialize their activities. Small and medium agro processing. Like in a model. I'm not saying exactly this model, but something similar to this is what is going to give incentives to Ugandan peasants to commercialize their activities and they move out of pizza. Why do I say so? This is because industrialization of agriculture is what will stabilize the demand for agricultural products. This is what's going to stabilize demand. This is where demand is going to create supply. First, make sure that you assure me that my product will never rot, will never drop in price. I will go back to the garden and produce exactly the same amount. This is what is done everywhere. Nuriya,ganda,yola,bebe,barima,tedi,ganda,munimirongo,tamanyi,muendo,baachi,tuba,ganda,kutunda,muendo,baabu,manyanda,ela,kurane,cash,flow,nakarichuleti,ngapa,
used as an ingredient at a higher level for alcohol. <coughs> Whiskey and ethanol, we are importing these products. Margarine oil, glue, Masomero gunaga kwe saguruwa na government choka tu bija China choka sorry yugula kwe tu civil sempa pula akati vyo singa tu bite ka muchi bochi mu rachi mo mimi wa Uganda tafira mo mimi on the other hand the maize stalks and husks if you got not No, come Those are going to be crushed into animal feet. While the cobs are used to make a product such as charcoal. You are going to, to go around and see some briquettes there from the court. So nothing is for waste under the Namukekera model. And that's where Uganda's future lies. To actualize agricultural modernization, we need to build agricultural value chains. There must be what is what we call a value chain. A chain to which tambula, okuva, okasoli, gomulimi omunimiro, paka kateba koko today, mzei gavade, tamanyiti, mulimu kasoli. Over just a kawunga call in the soa. But you come when no go now, good dropping you are, value your net dropping. To add, uh, to build the value chains, we need to start with the industrialization of our sector at a small scale. This talk, John, we have to give a We can't put a embossing in your credit, you know what? you see. Value chains, Bakubenevi Pande, it is so sophisticated. Bakura go Dara Dara Wunch. Tabawano, Wetago, taking a person near Manu, turning up, you know, no one who I want to work with him back. Nothing is coming out of complex processes in your life. In your life, things are done on the ground, like you see now, Kikera on the ground. Industrialization of agriculture is what Uganda needs to solve its immediate challenges. You know the immediate challenges of Uganda today? Mainly two. One is unemployment. Youth unemployment. Industrialized agriculture, you are making agriculture clean. No youth wants to, to do a dirty job. Our It's not that Abavuka Tevagala will be. No, Abavuka Tevagala will be Chap, Abavuka Bagala will be Yonjo. Abukaicha Wacha Pagonia, no Mala no Genda no Quata, or which in Hadu of Fetia Tuang and it were. But it was Rugai. Rugai. No way will be Janjar. If something will be Gwili. There is no way you can give me your garlic and cut it the way we judge it. It's just for Nothing can judge our me. What is going to make our culture purified, cleaned up, is industrialization. So challenge number one of youth unemployment is going to be there. The economy of Uganda now is abnormally structured. Abnormally structured how? Agriculture contributes the least to GDP, to the wealth of Uganda, less than 20%. Services contribute the most. When it comes to employment, agriculture employs 80%. Services employ 15%. That's a normal structure of the economy. Economies of the world over transform systematically from agriculture 
you must undergo an agricultural revolution for you to enter industry. <coughs> then industry to services. For us, from even in no agriculture to services. That's why you see now which services are people doing in Uganda. They are riding border border. Somebody sells land to go and buy border border. Sports betting. Now I see sports betting offices in rural areas. Deep in the village, Avavuka was in the rain. No papa remain of Uso. Boachi, Wanga Mukaicha is dirty for them. Poverty also is an immediate challenge for Uganda. Poverty will be dealt with with the operation where it's creation and the Namuke Kera model. Then the future ones, the future challenge for Uganda is going to be sustainable development. Today you may think that we are so much in a problem because we are poor. Time is going to come when we are both poor and sick. If we do not make the development of Uganda sustainable, sustainable how? The way we use our environment to earn a living. People are cutting down trees as if there is no tomorrow. Reclaiming wetlands. Ebutambali wafe jemva. Teacher unity. Nakula. Walu news na li mfuka ngende kane ngamba. Njaku imi ilaku wali kabira. Ne mfuka. Ne ngenda. Nukula mantu. Ngamba kabira kalirita. Nga kabira. Akati walu omusiri. Musiri guwaka soli na itanga uzi. I'm telling you, kwa yichibira tonuli na jana achisanyi yao. Machu mulo za wantu wakulea. Balalu tebagala miti. Babu tebamanyi because people have been put to that test and the limit of it of survival. No guidance at all. And the agriculture they are doing is more extensive than intensive. We need to intensify agriculture, not extensive. Oli wajana alima kuwa nunara vanga tebichada na agenda na sawe wala, na sawe wala. Waka tibutambala, wasinga wakalu. Yesu wache wanduwa ya nebate mevivida. Ya wadda kukantu. Why the military? Chibuzo chinubatu uza inyo. Banagi, to go and do where the creation is a good program. Nail Wachi, Basilicari. The military is known for its virtues of pragmatism, accountability, and respect. There are three major things known about the military pragmatism, Chigambo Charuzu, Chitegezachi. Okole chintu, gomaze kwe kakasanti, omwanyi result says na vam. That is pragmatism. You know the, you can measure the chance of success. You are pragmatic. Military is like that. Military rarely goes into trial and error. Kankasuke yonda bi. They do intelligence, counter intelligence, searching around to ensure that they are sure they are going to attack 200 guys coming. They have these kinds of weapons and so on. Poverty and poverty war in Uganda needs that pragmatism now. Number two, military chain accountability. Our president, Yalie Erwande, you know, Gambati. Uganda tell you what happened. But I want to know about it. Okay, this is going to be a good one. I'll cut you. The chicken chairman, you made a chicken. One can go to Uganda. I tell you what you have. Never go to the military. You must account. 
So kakati ito chikendeza wako kusinga wano Umanyiru kati ya babi mchivuga wa celebrity yeah. hmm? Bababa kukoti wa msitulila wako Mbaki na kabayi imba Umiri tuwe chukachiri yo Then respect Military people respect the military They take soldiers seriously Even those who do not respect soldiers or love them they At least they fear them <coughs> There are two things. You either respect a soldier or you fear him. That opportunity Uganda is not to Not only Uganda, even all the developed countries were developed by military men. Men in military uniform. Not neckties like me. We never to solo to call a fit. Never to solo to call a fit. As long as you could be watching military, the war against poverty and underdevelopment requires the military decision-making process. The decision-making process of the military is needed in the anti-poverty process <coughs> now. Why? Less bureaucratic. The military is less bureaucratic. bureaucracy. <laughs> Gendo funesi gini cha yonu. Nogia mungu funa noko mao. Nogamba na hita dayo funesi tamu. Nogia yonu funa stamu. Nogia na hita tuna kubia stamu. Tata deko date. Dayo fune date. Not dayo. Bila wakada ni wagamba na ya ati stamu jiwafu nye ncha. Akati soko gendeko na yoli. Muna angu manye vitu vina vizibu. Bureaucracy, hereditary. Procedures. Military tends to have a well streamlined decision making process. Less bureaucracy, deliberate, a deliberate decision making process. And lastly, they tend to be orderly and more pragmatic. We need that in anti poverty program now. That decision making process. Jano Salok Vaita, Java Gulida Koko, Chikwata Ganane, anti poverty program, doesn't take him. Several meetings. Mm. Huh? <clears throat> like it would have taken someone elsewhere, I know. To first cross check, you see now which hotel. You would be in a hotel right now. Five star. Muriao, ne Lubunyo, Mubata. Sadia, we have a term hotel of Wanga Yagara of Nanjo. Back hotel. Oh, Uganda, you need to the passions were there. Is there is no showbiz. It's sick. Then, number three, surveys indicate that the UPDF is the country's been following up these things. Gallup surveys, Afrobarometer survey, even the local surveys carried out by local media, they indicate that the UPDF is the country's most trusted institutions now. Why do you think this is so? It's because of the strong civil military relations in Uganda. The relations between the military and, the, and us very strong, built from these rural jungles many years ago. Jorali no Oksango Mudi and no Sangu Msidikari. You leave your father and go Msidikari Chamba, but to come see. At a vote from tax, Oyagaluri Nani of Msidikari, you are safe. Tell you, Jacob, what are you? Linga, Okurabo Msidikari Mutax. Number four, the military is known for its culture of expedience, practical order taking. Expedience is practical way of doing things. The military is the only practical institution I've worked with. When they say we're going to do this, it is done tomorrow. 
because it is an order with a lot of discipline. For us, you know, you are leaders. You have councillors, you have technical people there, you tell them, let us do this. You go and then after reaching there, they call you and say, but chairman, by the time we nakula giri de na bade mani na yongamba, So on and so forth. In the military, that circus is not there. We need that today, more than any time before. It's a direct line with the commander in chief. And the president of the country also will ease coordination and funding. You know, sometimes I hear many Ugandans, Ugandans are very interesting. You see, the soldiers have a direct line of coordination with the president, of communication with the president who by virtue of our constitution has all the powers and mandate to implement things. So we are likely to ride on that advantage, to get the political goodwill, to get things done. <coughs> Number six, it has a few limits on areas of operation. The military has very few limitations to operate. Since Soldiers have security training and the weaponry to ensure that places which are insecure can also be reached. It's only the military which can go to every corner of this country and implement a program without extra cost or with the minimal cost. Elsewhere, that's why you see we are crying that NADS was not reaching you. Because NAD didn't have the institutional capacity to reach all of you. They had to first use all the entire budget to buy pickups. Then before even they have finished carrying out just a survey of the country, all of the pickups are rotted. Because as they are taking the activities which they are supposed to take, they are also failing their families to weddings on the pickups, and so on. Then, after five years of assessment, the reports indicated that NADS was spending about 60% of the budget on salaries. Now, we are going to overcome all of that baggage through the merit. That's why, for me, I, I really support this. Then, number seven, international exposure for soldiers increases idea sharing. Nobody in Uganda here is more exposed than that gentleman in the military uniform. They have gone places, they have interacted with the people on the ground. They can come and tell you, in South Korea, this is how things are done. Let us avoid this mistake. For us to be out, we are sharing our problems with the village. You don't have any thing to benchmark with, like the civilians have been doing in NADS. Then the military also talks through action. This is very, very important. Soldiers rarely speak. You have seen General as he come here. He's the one hosting us. Did he say anything here? I'm the one who's speaking. I've spoken the entire day. Soldiers don't talk. Action oriented. They usually want to act more and speak less. Now, in Uganda, you will agree with me that we've talked enough and for so long. It's time we started walking our talks. We need someone who's going to put on the ground. General didn't tell you that he, to come here and set up this, he sold his own house. His own house. 
the most beautiful place where he hosted me in Garuga. So did and came and said, I want something on the ground. Because why? They are in the government, were still talking. So you see, uh, you see, you see, Ugandans are talking, going to radios, televisions. I usually write things that now three types of businesses are very lucrative in Uganda. Mobile or telephone. Buriye na kula masimu. Ya leta wa nesimu. Mugaga muzimu. Vanga masimu ya nesu wangarachi. Vamba ye hobi ya wana Uganda kuhugira. Business ya kubi, radio. Radios, FM. Sending, vanda hoka isa masimu, nevaga enda kukuredi. Sending a greetings. Nze, mtumira ko wabe wafe. Nze, mtumira mwami wange, but tutude wano, watuli eche misana. Mwani tomu uli lao, wanti mwami kutumide. No hita mwredi yo. Then, e chokusa, consuming. Ugandanis have a hobby in consumption. Consuming everything. And then, that's why now we are the guinea pig, where all products in the world are tried. But you are producing and sending out. After two bulla. So we will visit what we need. First, Sana Yomuntu, and not to move in, Okuga Koko get up. And you see the car oil. A chitinet Sembayo, the military is more productive unit in the country now. And with the highest concentration of well trained personnel who are in the ready to move shape. Ready to move. Very, very well trained. I teach soldiers at a, <coughs> the senior command and staff college Chimaka. But whenever, I, whenever they're introducing themselves, they are medical doctors, they are engineers, they are agriculture extension service workers. They, that military used to, to know Ugandans of soldiers who have failed in life everywhere else and they came to, to the army is no longer there. This is well trained army which is likely to give us our value for money. And lastly, UPDF has the tracker record of success. Right from the Bush War and other insurgencies in the country to the building itself as an army. You know, many countries around us don't have these armed forces which are operational. They are no paper. I think you've seen challenges around us. Then to constructing infrastructure. The EPDF has built infrastructure in Uganda. Without money, they get themselves and say, let us go and put up some. Then to, you know, Wazalendo Sako. You hear about Wazalendo Sako. Yes. When they were pioneering it, I, again, I was among the people who got, got through the idea. <coughs> and I was like, could this work this way? Now, as we speak, I don't know, Asako has about 80 plus billion in savings, mm -hmm. billion shillings. It's the only now Asako in this country mm -hmm. which is operational almost to the, mm -hmm. to the level of a bank. So why don't we want such to associate with such people to help us to move forward? After all, they are our children, our brothers and sisters, and so on. Lastly, in very few minutes, I know you are politicians. You, are, you want to run for elections in the future. You have had an aspiring MP. <laughs> Against the minister of state for self security. <laughs> <laughs> you are running against the minister. <laughs> yeah, that's democracy. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Gandhi test the water. <laughs> now, is the wealth or operation wealth creation a political expedient? Gabo Nabi Abfus. Chipana na chitia. 
I give a big yes to that question. And these are the reasons. Operation Wealth Creation is holistic in nature. It has a holistic approach involving all of the government departments in line to this aspect. This means therefore that it has been anchored very well with all of the institutions necessary for mobilization, political, economical, and social. You are going to find there all line ministries in place, all departments and agencies of government like NARA and so on and so forth. So when you are a candidate, why don't you want to associate with such a thing? It's going to bring you know, the benefits to, to your constituency. Number two, Ugandans no longer want to subscribe to politics that doesn't add value to their lives. Have you realized that? For you, what you think that people want to, you to bribe them, it's because people now are asking, before I go to look at Kuyege for you, before I go around to pin up posters, where is my benefit in this? You know Ugandan is capitalism. Capitalists now, more capitalistic than even the United States of America. The people of Uganda will from today onwards, I want to predict to you, will never listen to someone who goes to them to talk politics. This part is bad. You know, human rights, so do you what? All those things are settled. Because, you know, some days, some politician could come and say, you know, you, you, you have problems of police, there's a security problem here, all those things are going to be settled. People are looking for one thing, their livelihood and opportunities. So in the future, Ugandans will only welcome leaders who offer practical solutions to youth unemployment, to improvement of livelihood, and generally, for opportunities to make money. Do you, those are the only leaders people are going to welcome in their homes, to talk politics. How are you going to get poverty out of my household, sir? Apart from this soap you are bringing me. So as leaders, you have a program, you have the, the, this as a very good tool of political mobilization as well. Let alone all of those benefits I've explained here today. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that's the little I feel about the Operation Wealth Creation. As my tradition is usually, I go around searching for wise men, what they have said about something. One of these wise people is called Albert Einstein, whom you, many of you know, Albert Einstein, the first scientist, I think, and the only scientist to turn around this world the way it is today. He said that, and I quote, any fool can make things bigger, more complex, and more violent. It takes a touch of a genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. I repeat, any fool can make things bigger and more complex and more violent. It takes a touch of a genius and a lot of courage to move in the opposite direction. What do we mean there? It takes a person who is so courageous, like a genocide, <laughs> to go and sell a house, to put yourself in, you know, in line of fire, 
Suppose you know Ugandanese, you know them. You know ourselves. To come and do very small things, very simple, and less violent, to turn around something, make a revolution. All revolutions have been started by very small things. <coughs> the immunity, very simple. <coughs> Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Make things simple. Namunkekera model operation wealth creation is a very simple. You wonder really why it has taken us so many years to think about this. That this is what Uganda needs. I thank you very much for listening to me. Is that uh, still a B plus or something bigger than a B plus? <laughs> <laughs>